everyone, this is Geo Will from the FM Production Squared, and we're here today to restart our Mountain Blade Warband Let's Play walkthrough. So, and there's double double meanings to that. I'll explain what I mean here. Um, so, if you remember back in the live stream we did, live stream number three point three or three point five, somewhere in there, it's talking about the reshuffling of the projects and they were going to switch to Mountain Blade and Reseteer. And the reason for that was because I had footage for both of them, lots of it. Well, I went back into Warband to start recording somewhere. And that's when I noticed that my my save games, after I would reinstalled Warband and reinstalled Native Expansion, were no longer compatible with the Native Expansion I was using, because uh, I installed the newer version. And instead of installing the older version, I didn't want to because the newer version has some really cool stuff in it that um, really makes it a lot easier to work with. Uh, different, like, uh, different menus and things like that. Um, so... I didn't want to get rid of it and... Um, but I thought the features and things would be awesome to have in here. And there's probably, there was a lot of also bug fixes and things that were done in addition to that. Um, but due to that, we can't use the old save files, so we have to restart again. Um, there is a problem, however, and I think I fixed it, I'm not sure yet. Well, there's a couple of them, but one major huge problem is that Siege Towers don't work anymore in the latest native expansion uh, releases um, since about June. I think it was the first time it was reported. Um, the Siege Towers will not move forward at all. Um, whenever you have yourself and your, your some of your guys troops with you, the Siege Towers don't move at all. So, uh, make Siege uh, castles and towns which use Siege Towers, or require Siege Towers, um, unable to be beaten unless you're using the the cheat commands. You know, the, the you know, Alt F4 would really work well. No, uh, the Control F4 or Control Alt F4 uh, commands to knock out enemy units. Um, somebody said they fixed it by replacing the scenes folder from an earlier version of, uh, with an earlier version of, um, a native expansion. I've got to try that and see what happens. I had tried to also replace the scenes and scenes object file. All that did was break everything. <laughs> it break it broke everything. Basically, instead of starting out in the town, the town, um, you know, alleyway or whatever it's called. The streets in the town. You ended up in a dungeon. It started to look in a dungeon instead of ending up in a uh, like a the quarter thing with the with the merchant. You ended up in some random town setting uh, scene. So um, I put back in the original uh, from this version of the the six two three version uh, scene object scene uh, scene objects. I think is what's called scene props. And scenes files and checked it out and it seems to be fixed now. We'll see you now. Left the scenes folder from the version from 2011 that I was using uh, to test with uh, see if that's fixed. And we'll see if that's fixed because I didn't have any ability to go in and see if that fixed or fixed the siege tower thing or not. Um, it does remove a few things though, or sh probably will. According to that post, it removes the extra ladders that are present for some castles because in some time in some situations you'll have more than one ladder. Um, in the newer version of Native Expansion, and those will be removed. Which actually I think is probably... I don't know, more realistic, not realistic, I'm not sure which. Um, from a defense standpoint, it's better because now you don't have to worry about two, t two ladders instead of one. From an attacking perspective, it means that you're slowing down to a crawl, so that's a give and take. Um, and then I've had to restart, re -re had to restart the restart several times due to various things. Um, the first time I had to restart it was because of some uh, an issue with action where it was not recording the audio and the the microphone at all for some reason. The second time was because action was screwing up with the footage and putting in micro cuts into the actual footage. Um, then the the most recent time um, I had to restart because um, of issues that were happening while I was trying to record it today. Hopefully I've updated, it's all the Windows updates that were available, and I have updated some system drivers and things. We're going to see if that fixes all the blue screens I was getting. I was getting some weird blue screen issues. And it's only with this game that's what I don't get. It's just Mountain Blade Warband. And if I sound 
slightly drunk. It's because didn't get much sleep last night, so... Um, with a bear with me. Of course, I've always said that whenever I do videos sleep deprived, they're a little more entertaining. So I tend to make a fool out of myself. So we're gonna start a new game. I'm um, gonna do a female character this time instead of a male one from the original one because whatever. Um, this is just telling you the basic stuff that if you use a non-noble character or a female character, the early game is gonna be more interesting or cha and challenging too <clears throat> because of um, certain um, aspects of the game. <laughs> So I'll continue, female. So one thing that you, and it depends on what you want to do, but if you pick Impoverished Noble, you can choose your banner before the game chooses all the other banners. And it'll basically have your pick of one. Whatever you pick, the game won't use. If you do it the other way though, the game will use all the banners or a lot of them and then maybe the one you want to use is being used by another lord. And so you basically be using the same banner twice. I don't know why it doesn't remove the banners used from the list that it gives to you, but it doesn't. Um, so it's just one thing. Uh, so for that reason, I almost always use them, uh, use this one when I'm doing a game because I like to have my own banner. Um, let's see. Then we're gonna do. I'm assuming that while I was saying all that, you're reading the text. It just said basically, you know, what was your father before now. This is talking about now what you did as an. In your early life as a kid, what you did. You know, say Craftsman Apprentice. Then, adult, young adult life, what what you did. And we're going to say Smith, I'll let you read this now. I'm not sure if these really have any impact in, in your abilities or not. They might. I'm not sure. I haven't looked into that. One would think they would. The one thing these do affect is there'll be a, I don't know if it's part of native or if it's just part of native expansion, but there's a, there are occasional be bards that you can find in taverns, and if you ask them once you get more well known, they'll actually have a have been composing a song or a whatever they call it about you personally, and they'll use the information that you put in here and in, in that. So the last time, the last couple times I've chosen Lust for Power and Money. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to use that one or something else. I said, I don't know what this all does. Yeah, I guess, yeah, we'll do this one. <laughs> so Brutality Mode basically makes it so that um, you want to take some nails and hammer them underneath your fingernails and then... Uh, like string yourself up by them on something and then get drug dragged behind a, a car or something I don't know. It's just it makes the game super hard and it's already hard enough with the dark knights in it With this it's like, you know You get a little pinprick of a like a dagger hitting you and you like die instantly or something um, I wouldn't recommend it unless you are a masochist and I'm going to let them invade, and they'll invade after eight months of in-game time. Well, it says not before eight months, right? Ah, oh, come on. Um, never appear before eight months. In-game months, yeah. So, not before August of the first year. <coughs> and then, um, it's basically the last one here. <laughs> so I'm going to use the same one I've been using for the last couple ones it's on the third page banner there um, I'm going to allow equip that saving so here's all that we'll go over this stuff here in a second so that's the the name uh, your character level health experience and experience to the next level once you get to about level 25 to 30 it gets really hard to level up just because you don't get much experience from uh, battle anymore, and you get it most at that point. You'll get most of your experience through um, 
uh, completing quests and things. So let's talk about the attribute skills and proficiencies. Um, let's do prof proficiencies first because that's going to be the easiest to talk about. Um, all this is essentially telling you how well you can use the particular type of weapons. And what that means is different for each type of weapon. <clears throat> for example, for archery, your profici proficiency means how quickly, um, how accurately you can shoot. So in other words, you have the reticle and depending on this it'll flare out sooner or later. So take longer to flare out. And what that'll mean is that you'll have a much tighter vector attack cone, so your shots will be more grouped in where you're aiming as opposed to flying all over the place. Um, once you reach about 200 on the prof proficiencies for archery, um, you'll basically have a really um, tight aiming radi uh, radius and it won't flare out quite... You'll know, have at least 5 to 6 seconds before it flares out, so it um, helps you in that regard. For like pole arms, though, it's it depends on what type of pole armor you're using. For example, lances that you can couch. Um, it'll make it so that you can couch them more quickly after you've used them. Um, for like one and two into weapons, I think it might de might increase the speed at which you can block, and also decrease the attack speed, or e increase the attack speed. Um, archery acts like throwing, and I think crossbows acts like throwing, or archery as well. Throwing acts like throwing. Um, so let's talk about attributes now. So you have strength, agility, intelligence, and charisma. Uh, strength <clears throat> and all these attributes, the level of the attribute depend will determine some of these skills' maximum level they can go to. So you have strength, which um, adds one health point to your character per level and um, is used in determining the, the maximum level for uh, iron flesh, Power Strike, Power Throw, and Power Draw. And what, what it is is basically one-third of your attributes. So in other words, one-third of nine right now is three. So any of these first four can only be at, at max um, uh, level three. Until we add more to strength. Agility is um, increases your movement speed and uh, gives you um, weapon points down here for each level, five. Um, and also controls the maximum uh, level for weapon master shield, shield weapon master shield athletics riding horse archery and looting. <clears throat> Intelligence it will uh, give you an extra skill point for every point you put into it, um, and it controls the level for uh, trainer tracking tactics pathfinding spotting inventory management wound treatment surgery first aid and engineer controls a lot of things and a lot of important um, uh, important um, skills and charisma is the last one for every point you get plus one to your party size limit and also controls the le the level limit the you know, the skill level limit for persuasion prisoner management leadership and trade so for the skills, Iron Flesh for every point adds two points of um, health to your character and reduces the damage you take by one. <clears throat> so if I put three in here, I'd have plus six uh, hit points, plus six health, and I would take three less damage any time I would take damage. Power Strike increases the damage you do with melee weapons. Power Throw um, increases the damage from throwing weapons. Power Draw increases the uh, damage from... Uh, bows that you can do and also will determine how powerful the bow is that you can equip so certain bows require power draw 1, power draw 2, power draw 3 etc. Uh, weapon master increases the maximum amount of proficiency that you can have in a weapon uh, shield is um, will uh, improve the coverage of the shield as well as the speed and reduces uh, damage to the shields by 8% per skill level. And also some sk some shields will require you to have a specific shield level. Um, athletics is how fast you can run. Which can be useful if you're um, on the ground a lot. And also because um, the faster you can move the more um, of a speed uh, damage increase you can have. So uh, depending on your speed you'll have an increase in damage. 
or decrease if it's too slow um, on certain uh, objects like a horse. And if you can move faster through athletics when you're attacking, you'll do more damage that way. Um, riding just controls the um, type of horse you can use. It also increases your um, the riding speed and the maneuvering capability of the horse. Um, certain horses have a certain requirement for riding. Uh, three basically gets you access to most of them. Horse archery is um, just um, dealing with the um, aiming penalties aiming and damage penalties for archery and throwing things from a horse. Looting, it, looting is pretty important if you want to get um, really powerful weapons. Um, like for example faction weapons like the ivory arrows and bows from Vagar. Um, this has to be pretty high for that to happen so this is an important thing. It requires uh, AGI so um, a lot of the time we're going to be trying to balance uh, all these four attributes together to get the best mix for the more, more important skills. The more important skills we've covered so far are going to be Iron, Flesh, um, Iron, Flesh, Looting, uh, Trainer, Tactics, um, Pathfinding, Inventory Management, um, Surgery, um, first aid and wound treatment are important, but they're not as important as these other ones. Um, leadership and, uh, I guess prisoner management too. Those are like your most important skills that you'll have because they have, um, um, they give you benefits that will greatly decrease the difficulty of the game uh, after a certain point. So, trainer is very important. Um, it allows you to train your units without actually having them in battle. So, um, when you go into battle with new units against like a more hardened force, probably a good bet that a lot of your newer units are going to die, um, get killed, if you don't have surgery at a very obscene level, like 8 or 9 or something across all your most of your companions. <clears throat> I'll explain what I mean by that a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> but you essentially um, for every unit that you have whose lowers levels lower than the uh, party member who has the skill, uh, they gain a certain amount of experience and it shows the the, the experience bra uh, experience gauge, I guess you can see up here in the description for the thing. So basically it's a uh, one, two, three, let's see. I think that's ten levels. It includes zero, zero for being level zero. <clears throat> so at level ten, every unit gains 80 experience. Um, if it's lower than your party members that have the skill. And these, I believe these stack. Um, oh wait, this is personal skill. Never mind, not party skill. Okay. Um, every day each hero with this skill adds some experience to every other ah uh, okay I think I understand how this works now I think I finally understand it it's only been uh, what 12 years of this game franchise I guess yeah game franchise has been out I finally understand the difference between a personal and a party skill uh, tracking is it's it's important it depends on whether or not you use the map to determine what you're gonna do like for example um, it allows you to get more uh, information from tracks on the global map also it decreases the chance that enemy lords are gonna escape while they're in your uh, or whether you're holding them captive in your company but so it's like you're you're on the map and you see these large um, large arrows pointing in a certain direction indicating that there's a large force going through but you don't know how large if you have this at a high enough level you'll be able to see information such as the size of the force and other kinds of things like that I'm not really sure exactly what it it will tell you as you go through the skill levels because I never maxed it out before but it, it'll give you a lot of information if I recall correctly, you can even tell the faction that, that 
the tracks belong to. Um, tactics is another important um, skill. It basically will allow you to bring in more units at the beginning of a battle. Um, so the lower your tactics is, the, the less units you'll bring in when you're against another larger force. So let's say you have a force, an enemy force of like uh, 800 troops and you have 300. Um, with the lower tactics, you're only going to be able to bring in maybe um, 20 to 30. As opposed to having tactics at level 8, you'd bring in maybe up to 100, 120. Um, it's, it's basically like a, a ratio control. So for a certain, there's a certain ratio between enemy units and your units based on the sizes of the armies um, that you'll uh, be able to bring in. That's also based on the size of the battle, the m number of units you can have in the battle, which is a setting in the config file that you can't change from here, but you can change through a tool called Battle Sizer. Um, so basically it says, okay, the battle size limit is set to 200, so out of these 200, how many units should I bring in from both sides? And uh, tactics helps determine that. So the higher tactics is, the more units you'll get in battle uh, against um, enemy forces that are larger than you. Or um, when you're facing someone that has less units than you too. Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure about that. I think it's just if it's larger to your smaller. Maybe. Does it say in the... This says starting battle advantage. Doesn't say what that means. Um, pathfinding is very important um, for later on in the game when you need to get around quickly. Uh, so once you get a pretty good sizable um, company, um, you'll move pretty slowly on the map. And this basically increases your speed by 3% per skill level. Um, so the higher this is, the faster you're going to go. Spotting uh, increases your um, sight range on the map and also, again, is another one that will decrease the uh, enemy large chance for escape. I think this one is actually after battle, though, not um, when they're, you're captive. Or maybe it is for both times, but it doesn't specify whether it's when they're your captive or when they're when you're um, fighting them. I think it might be from fighting that when they're captive. Um, inventory management is another very important one. Um, basically, every skill level you put into this, you get six new slots in your inventory for new uh, capacity. Um, so you can have up to. No, actually, I don't think there is a maximum level for this, but it is dependent on your int. Wound treatment um, increases the party healing speed after battle. So after you get through a battle, your units will be damaged somewhat. This just speeds up the amount of time it takes, or decreases the amount of time it takes to fully heal them. Um, surgery. Um, for surgery, it it's another, this one is the more important out of these three. Um, surgery will keep your units from being killed in battle and just wound them rather than killing them. Um, basically it's a 4% chance per skill level you add. So the higher surgery is, the less likely it is you're going to have units that will be killed. And um, this can be very useful for not having to continually have to recruit um, units into your uh, army. First aid is... Likewise, it's as important as wound treatment, but it's not as important as surgery. I'm actually be in the middle between these two. And basically it says for every level you have this, you'll regain 5% of your hit points lost during a mission. So that means that like when you finish a battle, that's part a skirmish for part of a larger battle, and you go into the next skirmish, you'll regain 5% of the hit of the hit points you've lost during that previous part of the bat of the the previous skirmish. So that can be very useful. Um, for when you have long protracted battles that take several skirmishes to finish. Engineer will decrease the time it takes to build things in your fiefs and will decrease the time it takes to build siege towers and ladders when you're sieging a castle or town. Um, again, kind of important um, if you're into the management of uh, fiefdoms and whatnot and maximizing your taxes and what you can recruit out of them. 
Persuasion <clears throat> is one that I don't normally put anything into too much. Um, it basically is just uh, uh, what it does is it increases the likelihood that when you talk to NPCs and ask them, like ask them to do something for you or ask them if they would support you in some sort of endeavor or support your claim to a fee for something, um, that they're more likely to agree with you. Um, by lowering the relationship you need to have them do that. Because uh, every lord, you'll have a relationship with every lord, and that relationship will inform what they'll do, uh, be able, well, they'll be willing to do uh, for you. Um, we also have prisoner management, which is also slightly, it's kind of important, actually. It increases the amount of prisoners you can take, so um, when you start selling uh, prisoners to the ransom broker, the larger, the higher this is, the more prisoners will be able to have, so the more money you'll be able to make through prisoner um, selling. Leadership is probably right up there in, with importance, uh, in importance with trainer. It basically says that for every level you have, you gain 10 uh, to the maximum number of troops you can have in your command. <clears throat> also, will reduce uh, wages and increase party morale by 5%. And then you have trade, which basically just says reduces trade penalties. I'm not sure what that even means, but this isn't by 5%. And that's all the skills and all the stuff you need to know about this stuff. Now, um, so I was saying before, there are three types of skills. You have personal skills, you have leader skills, and you have party skills. Now, based on what Trainer says, every day each hero with this skill, blah, 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 blah. I think that personal skills, if they can stack, they do stack. So, for every hero companion that you have with you that has, let's say, trainer at level 4, um, they will give 16 experience, no, 23 experience to the units that are lower in level than them. So, um, I'm pretty sure that that's how that works. I don't know as if all personal skills are stacked or not. I think personal skills can stack, but not necessarily that they do stack. Party skills, on the other hand, I think are skills which um, you kind of balance against the rest of the party, and whoever has the highest one is the one that's used, I think. We can look this up, actually. It's actually a good thing to do. Let's see. So, mount and blade. Warband. Wow. Skill types. Party skills, skill that grants ability as a to the party as a whole. The level of the party skills chosen from the party member has the highest skill in that level. Yeah, okay. A player or a companion. So if yeah, so it doesn't really matter if you have the highest skill level of party skill. Um, you can have one of your companions do that, and you can focus on something else. So yeah, that's what I thought. Um, leader, like a party skill, leader skills ability, however, the player's, leader's, the party leader's level and the skill is used. So, basically the player. A personal skill is a grants ability to individual or companion. General skill only benefits individual, however, in case of trainer, the whole, okay, so. There's no case of a skill which stacks with itself, so. Except for Trainer. Trainer is the only one. <clears throat> if the player character has sufficient level on a party skill, it bonuses awards to the party's highest. Now, let's see, never. Who has 